So it starts with a Boston butt pork shoulder. Now there isn't a lot of prep to do for a pork shoulder. That's why it is one of my favorite things to cook. Now when you're looking for a pork shoulder, make sure to get the Boston butt. You don't want to get the picnic shoulder. You can use it, but the Boston butt is so much better. So all I'm going to do to this pork shoulder is just go ahead and score this fat cap. I always do this with a pork shoulder because it really helps let that fat render now. And there you go. That's all you really want. Nice scored pork shoulder. This is gonna let all this fat render out beautifully. But this is prepped. Let's go to the next step. And this is where it gets a little weird. Because for this marinade, we're gonna be using Jim Jones's favorite ingredient, Kool-Aid. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna be marinating this pork shoulder in Kool-Aid. And I've gone with a cherry Kool-Aid on here. That's because I'm gonna be doing a cherry theme with this pork shoulder. I've got some cherry wood chunks I'm gonna be putting into my cooker to give this some extra cherry flavor. My first concern with a Kool-Aid marinade is the sugar content. I figure with the amount of sugar in there, that pork shoulder is just going to get burnt completely on the outside. The meat on the inside will still be nice and tender, so I figured it would be fine. And when I went to the store to pick up some Kool-Aid, I found these little packets that they they sell here and these are fantastic because they have no sugar in them. What you do with these is you mix them up in the water and then you add the sugar to it. So the directions here say to add one cup of sugar to this packet and that is a lot of sugar. But I'm glad these are unsweetened because this is going to be perfect for marinating our Boston butt pork shoulder. The other positive to having these is I'm going to be able to mix them up and use them as a spritz during the cook as well. Because if this was normal Kool-Aid, I wouldn't want to be spritzing it with that amount of sugar. Like I said, it'll just get charred. But we don't have to worry about that because we got this sugar-free Kool-Aid packets and I picked up about 10 of these packets because I wasn't sure how much I'm gonna need. And I have a container of water. And if you can see, we got liters. You don't want liters. What are we doing? We want quarts. We are at about seven quarts. Each one of these packets is good for two quarts. And here is eight packets I've dumped into here. You can see it's actually purple. Pretty strange. I don't know really what is in here. I'm guessing it's majority of food coloring. So since I dumped eight packets, that's good for 16 quarts. And that is way too much for the amount of water we have in here. So what I'm gonna do is just dump about half of this into this water. And you can see it's quickly turning bright red as Kool-Aid will. So let's mix this up. So now that that's mixed up, let's go ahead and get this pork butt right in here. Oh no. Hopefully this doesn't overflow. Wow, that is the perfect amount. And there we go. All right, so our beautiful batch of Kool-Aid is now ruined and we can't drink it, but that's okay. I'm excited about this pork shoulder. I'm gonna let this pork shoulder marinate for 24 hours in this Kool-Aid. So I'm gonna get this covered up in my fridge and we're gonna let it marinate for 24 hours. 24 hours. And three new shelves later. This pork butt is done marinating in the Kool-Aid. You can see it's a little bit red here. I'm not sure if it's showing up properly on camera or if it's looking a little orange. But this thing is most definitely nice and red. So it's got a cool color. It does smell like Kool-Aid. So I was thinking of getting a cherry barbecue rub. I've seen them before but I didn't really want to affect the flavor too much. I'd really want to see how the Kool-Aid actually tastes on the pork butt. I didn't want to put any crazy flavors in the rub or anything. So today for a seasoning, I'm just going with my basic barbecue seasoning. If you want to see this recipe, I have a seasoning video where I show you how to make four different seasonings. I will put that in the description so you can check that out if you'd like. It's just your basics, you know, salt, pepper, garlic, chili powder, paprika, stuff like that. I just have the basic flavors on here because I really want to see if that Kool-Aid is going to add some flavor to this. You have to generously season a pork shoulder. This is a large piece of meat. So we need to go pretty heavy with our 
rub. Obviously no binder is needed on here. That Kool-Aid is working great. So I pulled this out of the marinade. I did pat it dry with a paper towel, get all that excess off. I'm also curious to see if this does anything for tenderizing this pork butt. Not that you really need it. Pork butts are usually super tender if they're cooked properly, but I know that there's citric acid in that Kool-Aid mix. So I'm curious to see what that might do to this piece of meat. Maybe nothing, but we will see. All right, so there we go. Now, usually on a pork butt, I like to let the seasoning stay on here for a bit because it'll sweat out this pork, get nice and tacky. But as you can see, that marinade has already done a fantastic job of that. Just check this thing out now. Beautifully covered in seasoning. Does that not look good and ready for the smoker? And speaking of smoker, what I like to do whenever I am smoking a pork shoulder is to try and use a direct heat cooker. You really wanna use direct heat when doing a pork shoulder, in my opinion, because all this fat is going to render down and when it drips into that coal bed underneath the meat, it steams back up and it just creates this very unique flavor. It's the kind of flavor you're not gonna get on an offset smoker. Don't get me wrong, I love an offset smoker for almost everything, but when it comes to a pork butt, I really prefer a direct heat smoker. So my choice today is going to be my pit barrel cooker. This thing is phenomenal at cooking pork shoulder. It is super simple to use and the results are fantastic every time. There's just a unique flavor, like I said, that you get out of the pit barrel cooker that you're not gonna get out of something else. So I've already gone ahead and started my pit barrel up. I like to use lump charcoal in it. And like I said, I have some nice cherry wood chunks that I threw in there as well. So I got that lit up, got it in the pit barrel and it is all warmed up. So this is ready to go on. All we gotta do is get our hooks in here so we can hang it out on our barrel. And here are the hooks for the pit barrel cooker. So you gotta remember on a pork butt, you have a bone here and up top here. That bone's gonna run in this area here. So just be mindful of that when you're getting your hooks in. I like to just go right in here. You wanna get right into the meat there because this thing can fall off the hooks. Trust me, it has happened to me before. There's nothing worse than going out to your pit barrel, opening it up and realizing your pork butt has fell. So there we go, on the hooks, ready for the pit barrel. So let's get this out so it can start cooking. All right, let's get this pork shoulder in the pit barrel. Super simple. Get the one hook on. Swing it over. And that is it. Get the lid on and we are done. So now you just wanna let the pork shoulder cook. I love the pit barrel cooker because it is a set it and forget it style of cooker. Just fill up your coal basket, throw in a few wood chunks, hang your meat in there, put the lid on and you are done. There's no adjusting temperatures or anything like that. It is completely self-sufficient. And like I said before, the fat dripping down in that coal base and steaming back up is gonna create an awesome flavor for this pulled pork. Now you wanna let the pork shoulder cook until it gets to between 170 and 180 degrees. That is a zone where I found pulling the pork butt to get it wrapped is perfect. Now to be checking the temperatures today, we're gonna be using the sponsor of today's video. And that is Typher and their Instaprobe Instant Read Thermometer. This thing is fantastic. Big numbers, the decimal point, and this thing is so fast at giving you your temperatures. I used to always use the Thermapen, but I really like using this Typher now. It is so much faster at reading temperatures than the Thermapen. And my favorite part about it that the Thermapen doesn't have is it is magnetic. So you can throw it on your fridge, throw it on your smoker, any piece of metal you can attach this to. So we're not gonna be checking the temperature quite yet on that pork shoulder. It's probably going to go between four to six hours before it is ready to be pulled and wrapped. But like I said earlier, I do want to go out there and spritz it with a little Kool-Aid. So let's jump ahead a couple hours, check on the pork butt, and we'll start spritzing it with that Kool-Aid. All right, two hours on this pork shoulder. And you can see all that smoke. That is all from the fat dripping down into the coals. That's what I was talking about. Let's take a look. It's looking kind of reddish. That's interesting. Other than color though, this thing's looking fantastic. You can see it's building a nice bark coming along very good. So like I mentioned, got some Kool-Aid here. Just gonna give this thing a nice spritz. Mmm, burning Kool-Aid, smells very interesting. So that's that. I'm gonna let this go for a few more hours before we give it another check, but I will be spritzing this probably every 45 minutes or so. So I'll see you when it is ready to pull. So three hours since the last check for a total of five hours. 
You can still see it's smoking pretty good from all that rendered pork fat. Once the smoke clears, we can see how this bark is looking, huh? Uh, it looks pretty good to me. Beautiful. It's exactly what we want, but let's go ahead, get a temp check on this thing. 175, so this thing is exactly where I want it for temperature, right between 170, 180. So let's go ahead, pull this off, and we're gonna get it wrapped. Here is the pork shoulder. Just check that thing out. Absolutely beautiful crust we got on here. Magnificent bark. This thing smells ridiculously good. I'm super excited about this. And you can see here, I actually put another hook in. I was getting a little worried because it looked like it was gonna rip, so I double hooked it there. Good method on the pit barrel cooker to ensure your pork won't fall into the fire. Let's go ahead and get this thing wrapped up. So I like to start with a piece of butcher paper, and I like to go ahead and just moisten this paper. I'm just using a little bit of vinegar here. So I like to just wet this paper a little bit so it already has a bunch of moisture in it when it's wrapped up. That's gonna help speed the cooking process along with this pork shoulder. The other reason I like doing this is because it allows you to wrap up the pork shoulder a lot more easier. The paper is a lot softer and it just folds up a lot nicer. But let's go ahead and get our pork shoulder down. Oh yeah. So I got the hooks out and this fat is already nice and crispy. This is beautiful. I can't believe how good this thing looks. This is going to be so good, dripping with juice. Let's go ahead and get it down and get it wrapped up. It's nothing special, just a basic wrap. You just wanna make sure you get your paper nice and tight. You can see how much easier it is to fold this paper. Much more malleable when it's damp. So let's get it nice and tight here. And you wanna make sure you get it fat side up. You always want that fat cap towards the top, exposed. So I got it wrapped up in the paper. You can see I have some tin foil here. That's because when I do a pork shoulder, I like to do a paper wrap with a foil boat. Now I've actually tried this method on a brisket and the results were fantastic. So make sure to check out that video. I really like this method because I like wrapping up with paper because it holds a ton of moisture and I feel like the tin foil, it kind of just steams the meat in there. And that's why I prefer the paper over the tin foil. But the problem with the paper is all that juice and fat that renders out of this meat ends up dripping down and out. And you don't want to lose that. That is really good stuff. So if you put a foil boat along with the paper, the foil boat's going to hold in all that moisture, but it's going to allow it to rise and come through this paper slowly. It's a great method. Highly suggest giving it a try, but let's go ahead and get this finished. So super simple. You're just trying to make little boat for this to sit in just to collect all that moisture and there we go so I'm gonna get this back out on the pit barrel and I'm gonna let it go till we hit that 195 to 205 degree mark and I will see you when it is time to get this pulled all right the pork shoulder has been on for another two hours all wrapped up first I want to just check this for tenderness oh yeah that's feeling just about perfect for tenderness so we got about 200, 201 degrees. So right around that 200 degree mark, you could take it from anywhere between 200 and 210 degrees. That's where you're gonna want this pork shoulder. I'm sure if I check in another spot here, it'll be a little hotter. Yeah, so there we're at 207. So like I said, anywhere between 200 and 210, this is done. So I'm gonna get it pulled off and let it rest. All right, so here is the pork butt. After a classic cooler rest for about two hours, this thing is finished. I'm super happy with how this thing came out. You can see the bark is fantastic and the fat on top there has rendered down beautifully. It is nice and crispy. I am ready to give this thing a try, but first check it out. Like I said, beautiful bark on there. This is going to be a delicious pork shoulder that's gonna make some awesome pulled Pork. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So obviously the first step is this bone here. Let's see if it comes right out. Get a nice hold on to it. Oh yeah, super tender. See there's a nice chunk of meat still on there, but that'll come right off. That is how you know it is tender. So now let's go right to that money muscle and just start pulling this apart. Oh yeah. Just look at that. 
just falls right apart. Oh my, this is super tender. Nice strings of pork right there. Now usually when I do pulled pork, I'll make a nice vinegar sauce for this. But today I'm just gonna be trying it out plain. See if that Kool-Aid made a difference. And I'll tell you what, this seems, just seems a little bit juicier and a little more tender than usual. I know pulled pork is super tender, but just the way I'm getting these nice, beautiful strands, it's a little different than usual. So I think that marinade might have helped out a little bit on that. It's got a nice smoke ring on there. And you see how it just pulls apart into these beautiful strands. This is awesome. I'm super stoked about this. We'll see if it has a flavor. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm not sure if that's a smoke ring or if that's the Kool-Aid that made it red. I'm sure it is a smoke ring, obviously, but I think the Kool-Aid might have made it a little extra red. Check that out. And give that a try. Mmm. Mm-hmm. That is absolutely phenomenal. It does have a different taste. Mm. Mm hmm That is fantastic. Now, I am trying the bark pieces, so it does have extra flavor. Let me try some of this internal meat. Just tastes like regular pulled pork, obviously. But when you mix this up with the bark, you're gonna get that flavor throughout. And I'm gonna tell you right now, there is something different about this than a normal pulled pork. I can't say it tastes like Kool-Aid, but it does have a different flavor and it's very pleasant. And the tenderness of this pork is crazy. So I think the Kool-Aid marinade definitely has something to do with this. Like I said earlier, I don't know if it's cause of that citric acid or what is going on in that powder. Who knows what they're putting in there. But this is definitely worth it guys. I would highly suggest giving this a try. And this was a super easy cook. Thanks to the Typher Insta Probe. Fantastic Insta Read thermometer. You can check them out. I'll put a link right here for you. I'll also put it down in the description as well as everything I like to use in my videos, the butcher paper, the gloves, everything is down in the description if you're interested. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give it a like. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe right over here so you don't miss out on any good videos. And if you wanna see another awesome barbecue video, you can check this one out right over here. But most importantly, get out there and smoke something good. Mm-mm-mm.